We live in a shell and a structure that we no longer believe what the Word of God says. We can speak doubt and unbelief and negativity much easier than the Word of God. And it should not be that way. We said this is a year of change and we must begin speaking that change is coming in our life. Change is coming in the atmosphere of our worship, of our praise, of everything that we do. I, I was reading a little story of a brother... David DePlessis, great man of God years ago that did such a great work, saw hundreds of thousands saved in South Africa and around the world, but David DePlessis organized a great, great crusade in Germany back in the 1940s in Germany, just after the war. And, and tens of thousands of Pentecostal people came to Germany from around the world to that great conference. And David was sitting in a large room with many preachers of great names of that day, of different denominations. And he began to speak. He said some of the other preachers of, of different denominations asked him, said, said, we want to ask a question. We quote the same scripture that you quote. But when you quote it, it has a different meaning. We can preach the same sermon that you preach. But when you preach it, it has more power. Preach out of the same Bible that you do. When you preach, there's something different. What is the difference? David said he began to ask the Lord right there, sitting in his seat around that huge room with, with those preachers. And he said, Lord, give me a word to tell them. And he said, all of a sudden, out of his belly. Somebody say, out of my belly. Out of his belly came a word. And he said, he said please don't take this in any offense at all. But the answer is obvious. Said, said the answer I'm going to tell you is not meant to bring any reproach or any hurt in any way to anyone in this room. It's the, the word that I'm going to tell you is to uplift you and to bring you enlightenment to what I'm about to say. He said the word that you preach is on ice and the word that I preach is on fire. you got to get a hold of it. Because you can speak a word and not have any anointing and not have any fire with it of the Holy Ghost. And it makes not the same impact as it does with somebody with some fire, somebody with anointing, somebody with a passion, somebody with a calling. In the book of John, chapter number 7, verse number 37, 38, 39 says, In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, says, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the spirit which they that believed on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet 
glorified. You see, this statement of Jesus that he promised to the believers an experience that is nothing like anything they had ever experienced before. That's the reason he he had to bring enlightenment of the Holy Ghost unto these people as simple as he could bring it to them. You, you, You see, this word today it, it's so simple that a child can understand it. It's so easy if we will allow the Spirit of God to begin to show himself to us in the way and the fashion that he, w- that, that he would, uh, that we would receive out of our being the Holy Ghost, the power of God, Jesus said, out of their belly shall flow rivers of living water. Do you you want rivers of living water flowing from you? I don't know about you, but I do. I don't know about you, but I do. I mean, mean, come on, you you know, y'all, we're we're not funerals today. Let me me just tell you, we're not in the funeral home. You know, it wouldn't hurt my feeling if you just, you know, said amen or something like that. You know, I, I, I'm telling you, there's got to be change made. And I, and I told you, unless you're willing to be an agent of change, there will never be a change come in your life. God will not force a change on you. You must be uh, willing to be an agent of change. You know, don't, don't, don't let things, well, it's, 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 I'm, I'm, not, I'm not one to do that. Great. <laughs> when you're not one to, when you're not one to rate, you ain't never rate, get just, you know, Surprise the devil one day when you ain't never done it and just stand up right in the middle of preaching and say, Glory! You'll be surprised what it'll do to you, much less the devil. It'll, it'll cause that shell you've been living in to, boom, break. You'll say, Well, my Lord, that wasn't hard at all. I've been going all my life and, th- and, 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 and just saying, I can't do that. And all of a sudden I got up and said, Glory! Hey! Because there's one day that I couldn't do it. I ain't saying you have to do it, but just try it one time. Just try it one time. You'll, you'll see. You'll see the shell, boom, break. You'll see all of a sudden, you'll say, my Lord, my God, there is a change coming into my life. I, I feel that river of life. I feel that river begin to flow from me. I, I feel the Holy Ghost bubbling up inside of me now. That, that, that's going to flow out on people when I go out the door. If we're not an agent of change, when we leave, when we leave the house, when everybody around us has been been, been uh, 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 shouting, and let me give you a little insight. Don't wait until you feel like shouting to shout, because I promise you, you'll never feel like it. If you're waiting on feelings, you'll never get there, my friend. Somebody, somebody, I hear somebody say, I, I, I don't feel, I've, I've got to wait till I feel like it because I don't want to be in the flesh. I'm sorry, you're in the flesh. <laughs> you live in a flesh suit until you operate in this flesh suit. You'll never do what you've seen somebody else do. <laughs> you know, too many times we try to be so religious. <laughs> You better be in the spirit when you're when you're uh, shouting. Well, first you got to first you got to make a step in the flesh. I'm sorry for Mister Know It All. If if you, if you wait until you get in the spirit, you'll never get there until this old flesh is broken. You you got to put this flesh under subjection and stand up and begin to praise Him. You got to put this flesh under subjection and begin to worship Him in spirit and in truth and and and, and do something you've never done to be an agent of change. Jesus, understanding that these people were hungry and ready to eat and drink, stands up and shouts to the people, If any man thirsts, let him come unto me and drink. Uh, thir- verse 38 says, And he that believeth on me, as the scripture saith, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. I'm sure many people thought him strange. People, people today think you're strange. People today think it's 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 out of order. You know that there, there was there, there, there was a report come out 
uh, just 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 recently of somebody I don't even know who it was, but a, but 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 a, but a survey in church, so, say try, trying to trying to get us to 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 conform to the world, saying saying. We live in a new day and a new age, and we can't reach people today in today's world like we did in days of old. Well, I'm sorry. My, my, my Bible says that Jesus never changes. Just because the calendar says we, it's 2015, and the calendar years ago said 1950, don't change God. Don't change His power. Don't change His anointing. Don't change His plan. The calendar date does not change. I'm sorry, Mr. Know-it-all. Technology does not change God's power. It only changes our thinking of who we think God is. We try to put God in technology. God, I mean, God uses technology, but God don't need technology. He didn't need it in years past, and he don't need it today. All God needs is somebody willing to worship and serve him. Many people thought him strange, but many who comprehended what he was promising understood that he was offering them something much greater than, than what the great feast was going to provide them. The feast was important. The feast was well prepared. The feast was rehearsed. The feast was expensive. The feast was what everyone expected. The feast was tradition. The feast was great. But Jesus stood up and cries out, I've got something greater than what you see in the natural realm. I have something greater than this. And that's what Jesus is saying to the church today. You see all of these great technology. You see all of the light shows. You, you see all of the things that churches do today. But Jesus... Jesus is saying, I have something greater today than man's idea of who I am. He says, I've got a river of life that's beginning to flow from your belly. And understand, it's not about technology. It's not about the world. It's not about anything. But it's about the power of the Holy Ghost today. The anointing that comes from above. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My Lord and my God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I just saw a little clip of Perry Stone yesterday having the youth, the, the youth camp over there in Tennessee. And honey, they, 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 they weldn't conforming to the world. Because I've seen them youth, I don't know if y'all, some of y'all saw, I've I seen them young people up running and dancing and falling in the floor like they used to do in 1950. <laughs> I, I, I didn't see Perry Stone up there saying, all right, let's conform now. Let's don't do that kind of stuff because it's 2015. Honey, they were dancing. They had the organ playing. They had music playing. They, they had that guy, what's that black guy's name? Uh, huh? Tell me. They had Eddie James up there. He was singing and people were dancing and people were praising God. Yeah, it's 215. Honey, they didn't say you can't do it. They begin to praise God. They begin to dance and run and shout and jerk and jump because there's something about the power of the Holy Ghost of God that time does not change it. Man's idea does not change it. The power of that river don't change with time it don't change with time it's the same yesterday today and forever time has no effect on the power of God time has no effect on the move of God what affects the move of God is us trying to put God in a box and say God don't do it today the way he did it then sorry God is still God Yay! He's still God. 
Still the same God. Still the same God. But the client is still the same God. When Mother A. A. Allen uh, would preach, what was his organist's name? David. When, that, when, when David was on the organ with Brother Allen, <laughs> Brother Allen will be preaching. And what that guy led, led, the, led the choir, what was his name? That black guy that would sing up there. I, I, I forget them names. I used to know them all. But yeah, yeah, yeah. What's that again? Gene Martin. Gene Martin. Gene Martin will get up there and begin to sing, begin to lead the choir. Honey, it, it ain't no different today than it was back in the 50s and early 60s when Brother Allen would have them on the court platform and Gene Martin will begin to sing. They begin to play the organ. They begin to sing. They begin to dance. There ain't no difference today than it was back then except man's idea and man's tradition. Honey, God is still God. Yeah, hey, hey. Ain't no difference today than when Brother Shambach and Brother McLaren work with Brother Allen and then Brother Shambach bought that big old tent and Brother Shambach will get out there with 10,000 people under the tent and he begin to sing and praise God and people begin to fall out under the power while he was singing. God ain't changed yet. Yeah, hey. My Lord, my Lord. My Lord. Billy Graham started a revival out in California many years ago in a tent. And he, and he started for a little while and it went on for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. Tens of thousands begin to be saved, born again. Honey, that's the same God today as when Billy Graham began to preach under the anointing many years ago and tens of thousands and now multiplied millions have been saved as that man preached through the years God hasn't changed that river that river's not changed but man has tried to change the course of that river in their life man has tried to divert that river from flowing the way that God wants it to flow my friend I'm here to tell you today if we my God if we if, if we who are called by his name if you who are called by my name if we will humble ourselves and turn from our wicked ways honey that's one of the things the church don't want to do today they can't let go of the wickedness that's prevailing in the house of God today God saying not me if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves turn from their wicked ways my God we're going to see something happen when the church begins to be the church again and say ain't nobody can do me like Jesus can't nobody do me like the Lord can instead of trying to my God bring some kind of, of other thing in a house my I, we, we got to let the water flow through the channel that God showed me a few weeks ago in my vision. He said, when it begins to flow out of you and begin to flow in God's channel, not man's channel, begin to flow and it comes up and it begins to rain down upon the people of God. Honey, it, it, it ain't, it's not water. It's the power. It's the anointing of the Holy Ghost. It's the glory of God falling upon his people. It may be called water. That's the only way Jesus could, uh, could, 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 could uh, put it toward, toward to the people. It's a, it's a river of water. Honey, but I'm here to tell you that water ain't a, ain't a water like we see it it's a water my God my God comes from the belly of God it's a water that comes from the bosom of God called the Holy Ghost something about the power of the Holy Ghost I can't explain it but I got it yeah I got it I don't know about you but I got it 
something about the power of the Holy Ghost will change you. It'll change hearts. It'll get in every church of every denomination and begin to change them and begin to cause people to be born again, cause them to be saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, seeing God begin to move in their life once again. That's what it will do when change will come. Yay. Uh. Mm. Mm. Uh. Uh. You see, that, that's that's the that's the reasons that that's that's the reason today so so many so many dead preachers. I don't blame it. On, I don't blame it on the churches and the church people. I blame it on the dead, dry uh, stick of wood behind the pulpit, t- telling people that it, that 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 that, that, it, that it ain't for us today. It, it ain't for you. No, no one of them can't get nobody delivered. No one can't get nobody set free. No one of people living in bondage and all kind of stuff it, because it ain't coming from the pulpit. The pulpit saying you got to conform to the world. You got to conform to this new age we live in. Got to conform because we live in in 2015. It don't matter today, saints. God is still calling people. He's calling and drawing them in to a people that's a praying people. How do you begin to pray and seek my face? He said, then I will heal their land. Honey, when we begin to be, my God, begin to seek his face, begin to pray and seek him like never before, then he'll begin to heal the land. I ain't talking about the earth we walk on. I'm talking about this land right here, this land right here called this old body. He's gonna heal this land. He's gonna heal the church again. And when the church gets healed, when the church gets on fire, then you're going to see the Baptist and the Methodist, the Episcopalian, the Pentecostal, the Lutheran come together again like they did in days of old and have camp meeting. They ain't having a denomination. They're having camp meeting. Yay. Uh-huh. You didn't see them back then fighting over. Well, I don't, I don't, I don't believe in that wildfire stuff. They, they, they didn't call it wildfire back then. They called it the Holy Ghost. But today you got some old dead, dried up stick up here. He don't want to, he don't want to turn loose uh, uh, a bunch of stuff that he got a hold of. Uh, he don't want to turn it loose, uh, so he ain't gonna preach on deliverance. Uh, he don't want to turn it loose because uh, he don't want to conform to what the Bible said. The Bible said, "Turn from your wicked ways." Uh, he got so much wickedness attached to him. He don't want to turn it loose, uh, honey. When you begin to turn loose uh, of the wicked ways uh, of the sinful nature of the thing that had you so bound. Those, those little foxes that so easily spoil the vines, that's what will turn you away. Them little foxes, it, it ain't that great big stuff. They got a whole lot of little foxes that will spoil the vines and cause them to say they ain't no power today in the blood. Cause them today to say you don't have to have a cross hanging in your church. It will cause them today to say you need to stay down. You need to stay quiet and reserved because we live in 2015. And we don't want to upset nobody. Honey, we need to be the church uh, of Jesus Christ uh, and have that water that Jesus told him. said, I got something a whole lot better than the feast in the natural. Uh, well, I see I ain't getting no further in my notes than I did last week. Uh, yeah. Jesus let them know there was coming something that no level of expertise or preparation or rehearsal or expense or tradition could ever substitute for. There was something coming something greater and ginormous, if you will. It was coming something that no glass of water could compete with. As a matter of fact, he likened it not to just a, a nice glass of cold, refreshing water, but he said it's like a river of love, living water, of eternity water. He said, what I have to offer you will not just keep you alive and refreshed for a day or two but he said this living water will be alive inside of you and it will flow out of you there'll be no holding this thing in he said it will flow out of you whether you want it to or not if you in Jesus he said if you in me and I'm in you if if, if this thing is in you it'll flow out of you if you don't want you you don't even know what's going on but you sitting in a service like this and my God you come to worship God you didn't just come because it was Sunday but you come because you needed a word you come because you needed to hear from God above and you begin to praise him you begin to glorify him then all of a sudden you didn't even know but that water begins to flow 
You didn't even know, but you punched your neighbor and said, my Lord, my God, he ain't preaching now, ain't he? You, you didn't even know you're going to do it, but all of a sudden your hand raised up, preach on, preacher. You didn't know, but you stood up beside your seat. You began to do a little bit of wussy tootsie dance. You begin to, mm, you begin to, mm, you know, ladies uh, like they used to do, uh, they used to begin to get up and shake their head. Bobby pins fall out. They didn't care, but they shake their head on the power of God. Yo, know, it's so easy to talk about them days, but what about today? We don't live in a different time than that. We just live in a different box today. <laughs> Yay! Uh huh. No, we live in a man's time, not God's time. When we, when, we, when we learn to get in God's time instead of man's time, then we ain't going to think about, well, it's 2015, and we've, we've, we've got to think about how we're doing this thing because, you know, you just can't reach the young people today like they did back in the 70s. I'm, 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 I'm here going to prophesy something to you today. That's, that's, that, that statement that they're making everywhere today is going to change just like they said gasoline will never be back down below $2 a gallon. One day they're going to wake up and say, whoop, there it is. I didn't think it ever happened. I didn't think they'd ever have revivals like they did back in the 70s. I, I didn't think they'd ever come running by the thousands to the church like they did back in the... Uh, some, somebody said the other day, uh, I mean, this is, this is a church group, said, said the other day, brother, said, 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 uh, said, said, said there's not people being saved today in the church like it was. It's, they're being saved out on the street. Well, that's great and almighty. That's great. That's great. Said only 1% in, in our opinion is being saved in the church. And I'm telling you, you better, just better hold on because there ain't going to be some churches uh, that, that ready that they're, they're, they ain't been praying is the reason. It ain't, it ain't because of the something changing. The only thing has been causing because ain't nobody been praying. Uh, but there's been some praying going on around here for a few months, uh, and it ain't going to stop. It's just now getting started good. Uh, ain't going to be praying around here, and you're going to see souls uh, being born again. I, 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 I don't want nobody saying, well, I don't know. I don't think it ever will. I don't think we'll ever see. That. When you get outside of your crazy, stupid box, and excuse me for saying that kind of layman terms, uh, but I'm crazy, stupid boxes that we get in and we have doubt and unbelief in our heart get out of that mess and step in the realm of the spirit of God and look out of your faith you can't see it you can't feel it but my God you can speak it you can say yes it will yes it is yes we are my God faith is the substance of things hoped for evidence of things not seen you begin faith talking faith walking Yay! Uh-huh. My Lord. Uh, there will be nothing holding this thing in. He said it will flow out of you whether you want it to or not. It will flow out of you when you're not expecting it. He said it's a river. It will be continuous. It will be constant. It will be relentless. Persistent. Continuous. Non-stopping. Never ending. River. Of living water. Because I have. The song says I've come too far to look back. I've come too far for somebody to try to tell me I need to calm down. Uh, they ain't going to get me to do that. I've had people tell me, and that's all right. If they, they say, if you didn't preach so loud, we'd come to your church. I've had them tell me that. If y'all didn't sing them fast songs so loud and everything, oh, we'd come. I just can't stand that loud stuff. And the same person will say that will go downtown and, and, and go to the Civic Center or whatever it's called now and go to a ball game or go out on a baseball field or go down the racetrack and you can't even hear yourself think and scream and holler and get hoarse. And they'll scream up, but, but they come to the house of God. I can't stand that loud preaching. There ain't no sense in that stuff. Got to be calm. I mean, I can't, I can't understand it. No, it's because you're in the flesh. I, not, I done told you, you got to start in the flesh, but get, get, get in the flesh and then, and then let the Spirit of God begin to move in, in you. Mm. Don't, don't, be, don't be thinking about it. It ain't, it ain't my way. It, don't, it ain't never going to be your way. It's all got to be His way. All got to be God's way. In Him. In Him. Somebody say in Him. 
In him there is life. In him there is peace. In him there is deliverance. In him there is power. In him there is wonder working power. In him there is joy unspeakable and full of glory. In him there is faith. In him there is righteousness. In him and him only is holiness. Have you ever seen such a day? I know it's been in the past, but such a day that especially the Pentecostal people are trying, trying their best to be holy. Now, now don't get me wrong, because the Bible says without holiness, no man will see God. And holiness, it, it, wasn't, it didn't say without a denomination. It's talking about holiness in God, not holiness as a denomination. But, but today, so many, so many, especially Pentecostals, are trying to tell you about, about how, how you going to live holy. Honey, I'm here to tell you, you can't outside of him. It's all about him. We're so busy trying to live. <laughs> don't get mad at me. Don't get Trying to live a a quote unquote holy life that that people will respond to instead of a holy life that he will respond to because a holy life that he will respond to you'll be going through hell itself and people around you will look at you and say wonder what they've done wonder what they, I mean they said this in the Bible too Wonder what sin they've done. Yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm sure they've been. I'm sure they're not right with God. But, the, but in your holiness, you're going through hell itself. You've slipped and fell. Huh? You fell down in the biggest mud hole hell put in front of you. But you got up. You've been sitting saying, God, I can't do this. And God, come down with his mercy and grace, begin to wipe you off. Say, son, daughter, that's all right. I seen you when you fall. I seen you when you come up to that mud hole. I seen you when you fell down in it. But I was right there waiting on you. And I saw you just begin to quiver a little bit. And I knew you was going to get up. So I reached down and picked you up. He saw the holiness inside of you, the holiness of God that was determined. Though God slay me, yet I'll trust him. Though the devil throws everything he's got in his arsenal against me I may stumble and fall I may slip and fall but praise be to God I'm not staying there I'm getting up and I'm marching forward that's the holiness that God will respond to we want, we want man to see us brother and I haven't I haven't got mad all week. I fasted all week long. I read 492 verses this week. Bless God, I'm holy. You stink in God's nostrils. That's not, that's not, that, you know, God, God's not moved by that. Uh, uh, hey! God is moved. When all week long you've been going through the darkest hour of your life, but Sunday morning rolls around, you somehow make it out of the bed. All hell is coming against you and you come to the house of God. When they begin to sing praises, you lift your hands. You don't feel like it. It ain't even in you. You don't even know why you're doing it, but you lift your hand. Say, thank you, Jesus. You say, I don't know. I, I've been through hell, but thank you, Jesus. I'm here today. Thank you, Lord. You give me breath. Thank you, God. And all of a sudden, something supernatural inside of you, that river, my God, that Holy Ghost and fire, it begin to take over now because it's seen you going through hell. It's seen you going through trial. It saw you in depression. It saw you in despair. It saw you sick and afflicted. It saw you with everything coming against you. And it said, that's my child. That's my baby. That's the one that I knew would make it. I knew, I knew, I knew that would make it. My God, that's what moves God. Hey, glory. Glory. Mm. 
My, my. All right, Pastor, calm down, preach. Uh, Verse 39 tells us how he's not really talking about the water per se. I've told you that. But rather he's talking about the Holy Ghost or the Holy Ghost in filling. That's what that river of life is. Here's a question for you. How can a person talk about something that they have never experienced before? Huh? How can a person talk about something? How can somebody come up and tell you the Holy Ghost is not real and they've never experienced it before? They they stand up behind the pulpit every Sunday. That's not real. Then people are crazy. Yet they've never experienced it. Let me just give you an example in the natural side of it. And this being my uh, experience and, and, and knowing me, me being around the painting business for over 40 years now. Many times I've walked into the paint store and asked someone for a product. And they, they, they take me to something that, that I know is not what I'm wanting. They'll say, well, this will work. And I'll say, no, it won't. Yeah, it will. I said, no, it won't. Yes, the salesperson said it would. I said, I don't care what the salesperson said. It won't. Well, how do you know? I said, because I've tried it. It won't work. I've tried it. I remember years ago, Sister Mary, Brother Steve and I, her her son-in-law, Stephen, we, we we was getting some products to put on the barn roofs, a primer and a finish. And I remember a paint salesman came to the paint store one day. And we, we'd been using this, this primer that was, was the best we'd ever used. And it was, it was the best covering, best at, 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 at adhering paint product we'd ever seen. Someone came and said, this one here, it's as good and possibly better. And I told Jerry, the paint store owner, I said, so that's what they say. He said, yep, that's what they said. You, you, you need to try it. I said, no. I said, no, Jerry, I, uh, I'm not going to buy any. I said, you give me a gallon of it, and I ain't buying it. Even though uh, we wasn't paying for it, Sister Mary. The, but we, t- we said, we're not buying it. You give us a gallon of it, let us go try it. Because we got something that's proved and tried. And we took it. And I, and I took a piece of that, that, that galvanized metal roofing we was putting it on. And, 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 I, and I put what we'd been using here. And I put what they had been using down here and let it dry overnight. And I said, I'm going to come back in the morning and see which one is the best. And, and, and I knew the one we'd been using, when it dried, it was, it was a water base, the best water base that, that they'd ever brought out. You couldn't, when it dried, you couldn't scrape it off with a pocket knife. It would cover and it would stay. The next morning I come up and I took my fingernail and I scratched that new stuff off and it just peeled off. And I took it back down to the paint store and I said, Jerry... I said, call that paint salesman down here and tell him that he needs to go back to that company that he's selling this stuff for and tell them they're, they're selling a, a, a product that's not proved and tried. You see, how can someone tell you about something when they've never experienced it, when they've never known of his glory? How can I tell you how to be born again if I've never been born again? I can read you I can read you scripture after scripture. I can read after somebody else's idea, but I can't tell you how to be born again until I am born again. Because I've never experienced it. But when I was born again, then I was able to tell somebody. I don't know how he does it. But he does. There ain't, really, there ain't really no pattern of thing you got to say, but just, just, just go to them just as you are. Remember the song they always played with Billy Graham's altar call, Just As I Am? Just as I am, I come to thee. Come to them just as you are. Just as you are. With all of the sin, with all of the burdens, with all of the stuff that's, that, that, that's got you bound, come to him and just, all you got to do is just kneel down and just begin to say, Lord, I don't even know what to say. 
when you, when you say that. Because you know what? When you made that determination to get up out of your seat and come forth, that was, that was it. That was the thing right there that stirred God. When you, because you said in your mind, you made up in your mind, I'm going to go be born again. And when you got up out of your seat with, 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 that, with that convicting power, I ain't talking about somebody dragging you down. I'm talking about you. When you, under your own power, by the power of the Holy Ghost, got up out of that seat, that's when it begun right then. You hadn't spoken a word, but that's when it begun because you determined in your heart if a man believeth in his heart and confess with his mouth. So you begin to believe in your heart right then that Jesus was somebody you didn't understand but he was a Michael he was somebody that could save your soul because uh, I knelt down there in 1972 in the month of August I didn't know what to say I didn't, I didn't have nobody beside me telling me, now repeat after me. Nobody told me what to say. Nobody, I mean, I just knelt down there, and I began, I don't even know if I even said anything or not. I just began to cry, big old tears running down my eyes, running all over the floor. I felt something come in the top of my head. I began to cry and bawl. Honey, it wasn't my words. It was my spirit calling unto God. I mean, all of a sudden, I felt greater than Mr. Clean could ever make you because I began to feel a cleansing power come to the top of my head, go out the bottom of my my feet and I nobody didn't have to tell me nobody had to come around and say are you born again honey I knew that I knew that I knew hey, that I had met the master of the sea and everything my God I felt like I was a 10,000 pounds lighter I felt like I could get up and fly all around why because he came down in a moment and saved me and lifted every burden off of me honey that's the kind of God My Jesus. Huh. Yeah, Lord. Uh-huh. My, my, my. Uh. Church, there's got to be more than something that is important to do on Sunday morning. It has to be more than just well prepared. It's got to be more than well rehearsed. It's got to be more than the expense. It, it, it's it's got to be more than what everybody expected. And it should never be tradition. I believe this church needs to be spirit filled and spirit led. I believe this church needs to be a, a place where the Holy Spirit of God has free reign to operate and manifest himself in everyone's life. I believe that you have got to be an agent of change and begin to say, God, I want to, I, I want to, I want to, Lord, I want to, I want somebody to see something in me that's different than they've ever, I don't want them just to see me anymore. I don't, want them, I don't want them to know because, you see, most, you know, most Christians, whether you, whether you know it or not, most people know your routine. And I'm not, I'm not saying that to be mean or ugly or bad because they know my routine too. So let's just say they know our routine. Everybody knows our routine. I'm talking about other Christians. I know yours. You know mine. We know you come in the door, you shake hands, you do this, you, you, you walk a certain way around the, 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 the building. You got a certain seat you go set in. You got a certain way you act. I ain't, I ain't saying there's nothing wrong with it. I'm just saying be an agent of change someday. Come in here and say, I'm going to surprise everybody. They ain't going to see me for who I am or who they thought I am. They're going to see an agent of change in me. I'm going to sit on the other side of the building. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just walk around. If 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 I if I sit over here, I'm gonna just walk around all the way over there. I'm gonna come over here, walk back. I'm gonna walk around. Check. I'm gonna make them say, "What in the world are they doing?" There's a change in them. I ain't never went. I ain't never even went upstairs to see all the TV equipment. I'm going well, all of a sudden one day, I look, oh, oh, up, up, up there, up there's up there's people I ain't never seen just standing up there watching Sister Diane or Sister Linda, whoever's up there watching them.